Self-publishing is a wild, magical arena. It gives us access to strange and beautiful things that may have never seen the light of day if authors were reliant on just traditional publishing. And I want to share one particular prolific self-published author with you today and review one of his published works. You may already be familiar with him. Chuck Tingle has published more than 280 erotica stories on Amazon. He has a YouTube channel. We'll talk more about that. And he was nominated for two Hugo Awards. We'll talk more about that, too. Some of his most popular works are Harriet Porber and the Bad Boy Parasolophilus, an adult romance. Space Raptor Butt Trilogy. Scary stories to tingle your butt. Seven Tales of Gay Terror. And the classic... Ooh, my voice went up weird there. And the classic Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt. He's written some culturally relevant stories that reflect what is going on in contemporary popular and political culture. Such as, I freed this handsome cargo ship from the Suez Canal and now he is stuck in my butt. Pounded in the butt by the handsome physical manifestation of Trump's Twitter ban that should have come years sooner, but fine, now that it's here, high five. Oppressed in the butt by my inclusive holiday coffee cups. Honestly, I think I could just sit here and read Chuck Tingle book titles to you for like an hour and be fully entertained. You wouldn't be, but I would be. You'll notice a lot of recurring themes throughout his work. There are sentient objects, as well as sentient, non-tangible concepts. There's a lot of getting pounded in the butt. And there are some very meta works about getting pounded in the butt by Chuck Tingle's own stories. I have to read this one off of my notes because it's a lot of words. Not pounded by my book, pounded in the butt by my non-fungible tingler that is literally this NFT, because of the current catastrophic environmental and ethical impact. I've been aware of Dr. Chuck Tingle for quite some time, but now I've finally read two of his works. Bisexual Mothman Mailman makes a special delivery in our butts, and My Macaroni and Cheese is a lesbian, also she is my lawyer. I will be doing a super quick review and maybe reading selections, although none of the juicy ones, from Bisexual Mothman Mailman makes a special delivery in our butts. And then we will talk a little bit more about the author, Chuck Tingle himself. Because there's a lot there. Um, it's worth noting that these aren't so much books as they are short stories. Uh, this one is only 37 pages in the Kindle. Okay, so the Mothman sex book. Um, the basic premise is that Ivy and Cooper are a young couple who both work from home and they usually enjoy travel and other adventures together, but they're both on deadline and they are just too busy with work to go anywhere. It was published in June of 2020, so the whole working from home and stuck in the house theme is very on point. The story is told from Cooper's point of view. He's the one who sees the new Mothman Mailman first and is immediately struck by how attractive he is. And they do describe the Mothman as looking sort of like a Mothman. Standing before me is a mailman that I don't recognize. We've had Noah delivering packages for the six years that we've lived in this home, but it appears something has happened, because the guy standing before me is certainly not Noah. Instead, I'm faced with a muscular mothman, the creature covered in grayish-white hair and sporting a large pair of wings folded across his back. His eyes are huge and glowing, placed lower than one might expect, and giving the rare cryptid a distinct appearance, as though his head was actually positioned somewhere deep within his muscular chest. Of course, the Mothman is delivering a book that Ivy ordered, and it is a Chuck Tingle book called Bisexual Buckaroos, Seven Bi-Group Encounters in the Tingleverse. 
So then Cooper orders a package with same-day delivery so his wife can also see the Mothman. And when the Mothman is delivering the package, he winks at Ivy. So the couple is just like, oh, it is on. So they decide to seduce the Mothman mailman by ordering more packages consistently and flirting with him. The sex begins on page six, and it is graphic. Then the Mothman puts his uniform back on and resumes his deliveries with the promise that they will be seeing more of each other. I have some notes. First, there are typos. Uh, there's a typo in the first sentence. Uh, the mailman's name is also Indrid, and it does appear as Ingrid at least once. Uh, I also love the idea of someone trying to bring up the idea of spicing up their sex life with their spouse by ordering a Chuck Tingle book. It's probably more ridiculous than several other aspects of this premise. Also, it really throws me off that the Mothman mailman is the one delivering the same day shipping item, which is a, a pen, um, because normally when you order something with same day shipping, it's delivered from a store somewhere within the nearby vicinity, either by an employee of that store or some sort of third party like Grubhub, Instacart type of service. They don't give it to the mailman who then like loops back around a neighborhood he's already been through to deliver that package. So, I mean... Take the book for what it is. I don't think you're really supposed to be questioning the logistics of same-day delivery in this Mothman erotica novel, but I still am. I also don't want to get too graphic into my description of certain parts of this story, um, but there are certain impracticalities, there are certain choices, there are some things that... Th there is one part that made me full-on cringe, and it is something that if this were um, even remotely real, Ivy would definitely be getting like a bacterial infection, and... Mm -hmm. So, as I said, the sex begins on page six. And then the story is over on page 10. What? There are 37 pages in this thing. Turns out there is a second story. It is entitled Bisexual Polyhedral Role-Playing Dice Orgy. It's about this guy who is playing a Dungeons & Dragons S game with his friends, and he keeps rolling bad numbers or, or something. I don't understand how those games work. Um, so his friends suggest that he go and get some lucky dice. He goes to a game shop and he meets a human-sized group of polyhedral dice. And there are both men and women die in this group. And they look like dice, but they wave at one point. My head hurts. Anyway, the dice are all, well, you bet we're lucky. Wink, wink. And the guy is just totally oblivious to the innuendo, so he's like, great, let's go! So he takes the dice home, and the dice proceed to seduce him, and then he has an orgy with all of the dice. The story does end with him taking the dice to his game and rolling exactly the numbers that he needs. So, yay! Happy ending! in more ways than one. But then this story ends on page 22 out of 37, and the last 15 pages are just a list of other Chuck Tingle books. I will begrudgingly say that these stories are just slightly, a teeny tiny bit better written than what I expected, because I expected something that was about on par with fan fiction written by a 13-year-old and published on fanfiction.net. So these stories did exceed my expectations, but my expectations were very, very low. Though the writing certainly is not stellar. And these stories are weird in that they're not exactly parodies. 
Like, there's humor in the abstract concept of seducing your mailman who is a mothman, but there aren't really jokes. Like, the stories are passively funny, but not really proactively funny, if that makes sense. And for all intents and purposes, the Mothman functions as essentially human during the sex scenes. Like, the author doesn't utilize his wings, or describe his fur, or his glowing red eyes, or really add any unique Mothman-esque details. It's just over-the-top porn, but you know logically on some level that one of the participants is a Mothman. I will say that the lesbian mac and cheese story does add a little bit more to this, as there is um, a specific consequence to having sex with sentient mac and cheese. Um, you're just, you're gonna have to read that one for yourself. If this video gets a hundred likes, I will also review the lesbian mac and cheese story. Also, all of the encounters described within these stories are clearly consensual and thoroughly enjoyed by all parties. The only person feeling uncomfortable is me. Let's talk about the author, Dr. Chuck Tingle himself. So, who is Chuck Tingle? He says that he is a Taekwondo master with a doctorate in holistic massage from DeVry University. That is essentially a lie. DeVry University has stated that they do not offer that program. And Chuck Tingle is clearly a pen name, although he does maintain that his real first name is actually Chuck. But we don't actually know that. We don't actually know anything. We do know that he was nominated for two Hugo Awards. Uh, the first nomination in 2016 was for his story, Space Raptor, But Invasion. However, this was actually an attempt from a conservative group called the Rabid Puppies to make a mockery of the Hugo Awards. However, at least in Chuck Tingle's mind, it kind of backfired. However, the nomination did make some people think that Chuck Tingle was actually a member, or perhaps the leader of the Rabbit Puppies, and this whole thing was a very elaborate scheme. But Chuck said that if he won, he was going to have Zoe Quinn, a noted feminist, game designer, and person generally despised by the puppies, um, accept the award on his behalf, and then give a speech. This made people think that Chuck Tingle was actually Zoe Quinn. And Zoe Quinn says, no, definitely not. Which, I mean, I kind of believe. Once, once you look at all the information about Chuck Tingle, I don't think that this woman is Chuck Tingle. The second nomination was in 2017 for the award Best Fan Writer. This one was not a political statement or a mockery. It was done out of love although he didn't win. So let's go more into what we do sort of know about Chuck Tingle. He claims to live in Billings, Montana, and sometimes raises money for the Billings Public Library, although the library has publicly stated that they have no idea who he is. He calls his books Tinglers, which is defined as a story so blissfully erotic that it cannot be experienced without eliciting a sharp tingle down the spine. He calls his fans buckaroos, or bucks for short. Uh, he sometimes uses lady bucks to refer to his female fans, although I do get a sense that buckaroos could be considered gender neutral. The FAQ on his website is written in this very bizarre tone with a unique manner of speaking. It is very different from the writing style that's used in his stories. Chuck says he has Asperger's. We don't know if that's true. Chuck says that he has a son named John, or as Chuck phrases it, son name of John. We don't know if that's true. On the FAQ, someone asks, are you always like this? And here is his answer. 
No, sometimes I am Borson Reams, turn of the century Alaska fisherman, and sometimes I am others. Sometimes I am many people at once. Hope that explains well. Okay, cool. Clears that right up. His son, name of John, says that Chuck has schizophrenia. Yes, John supposedly spoke out in a Reddit AMA back in 2016, and he paints a very different picture of his father. He says that his father is a kind yet strange man who lives with schizophrenia and is an autistic savant. John says that he proofreads his father's works, his father's erotic novels, for publication. John types normally in very well-constructed sentences. He is his father's primary caretaker, and it seems to monitor Chuck's social media for signs that his mental condition may be deteriorating. Um, Chuck has been known to sometimes tweet about removing his skin, and according to John, this is concerning because he does again, according to John, have a history of self-harm. John reveals that Chuck has this very interesting mental component where he desires to become other people or things. Like, Chuck really wants to become a jet. And considering how many of his works deal with these sentient objects that are usually inanimate, it makes a certain amount of sense. While Chuck is making a good amount of money from his books, he is, at least according to his son, uh, receiving checks from the government. I assume that they are disability checks. And he also receives financial assistance from his son, again according to John. John acknowledges how much Chuck seems to enjoy the fame from his books, and John provides some insight into some of his father's eccentric, recurring Twitter narratives. Like, this one guy named Ted Cobbler is heavily featured in Chuck's tweets as sort of his local nemesis who has many nefarious plots that Chuck has to foil. According to John, Ted is a real man, although Chuck tends to latch on to names and words in a very odd way. So while his name is probably something similar to Ted Cobbler, it is not actually. Ted Cobbler. And apparently, Ted is this young, cool guy with a cute girlfriend and a wide social circle, and Chuck has presumably fixated on him out of some jealousy over Ted having all of these things that Chuck actually kind of wants. It all makes a strange amount of sense. But again, there is no external evidence that any of this is actually true. John may not be a real man. He could just be another character from the same person who plays as Chuck. Chuck did his own Reddit AMA back in 2017 on April Fool's Day. So... His YouTube channel features a variety of meditations. When you do this guided meditation, you will get hard as rocks and understand reality better. As well as some educational videos on a variety of topics. Chuck Dingle's complete guide. Gardening. Not many buckaroos know this startling fact. But long ago on this timeline, there were no plants. One thing I noticed is that Chuck's voice in the more recent YouTube videos, as well as his voice in his TikToks, is different than the way his voice sounded back in 2016 when he appeared on the Smart Bitches Trashy Books podcast. Yeah, yeah. This is Dr. Chuck Single, uh, the best author in Billings, and I uh, am a writer of all, all books and called Tinglers. Hello, buckaroos. This is Dr. Uh, Chuck Tingle, and I have been a suspended man on Twitters. So now I have, am running away to dang uh, TikTok way. I also tried to examine the only known photo that exists of Chuck Tingle's face and compare the teeth and the lip shape to the masked figure that appears in his TikToks, and it doesn't really look the same. 
The TikTok man clearly has a gap in his front teeth, and the photo does not. I mean, teeth can shift over time, but... In all recent media and in-person appearances, Chuck Tingle wears a sack over his head with the eyes and the mouth cut out. He also speaks in a weird voice with an unusual cadence. And I feel like these two factors combined could enable any man of a similar height, build, and timber to act as Chuck. When you break it down, there are essentially two possibilities. Either Chuck Tingle is a man or a group of people who have come up with this very elaborate joke and a creative yet strange marketing strategy that allows them to make a lot of money, or Chuck Tingle is a neurodivergent individual who has channeled his very unique perspective on life and love into this strange yet compelling body of work. One thing I don't like is that some people insist that Chuck Tingle has to be fake because his books contain so much nuance and understanding of the world and economical issues. But like, just because a man has a very unusual perspective on things it does not mean that he is not intelligent or well-read or capable of understanding and utilizing these very complex technical topics. So not saying that Chuck Tingle is real, just saying that that particular argument is moot. I'd focus more on the fact that Chuck's writing is structured so differently on his website and in his social content than it is in his writing. Although John has mentioned that he heavily edits and proofreads his father's work and sometimes has to rewrite entire sections to try and clearly explain what it is that he believes his father was trying to convey. So who knows? Chuck Tingle recently had an in-person event on August 22nd, 2021 out in LA. Very far from Billings, Montana. But he has been seen in person. And there is a YouTube video that shows Chuck uh, at a convention, stumbling across a panel that was talking about him and his work, so he stealthily makes his way across the room. I'm a millennial, I have been pounding the blood hard on student loans, and I will... <laughs> <laughs> at the time of filming, I have been unable to find videos of the August 22nd event specifically, but from what I can tell from other in-person appearances, he does seem to maintain the same demeanor, persona, and appearance that he has in his YouTube and TikTok videos. The August 22nd event was a tribute to Sweet Barbara, who is another one of the recurring characters that Chuck talks about from his life. Uh, he implies that Sweet Barbara was his wife who died. But according to John, Chuck was married to a Barbara, but they divorced, and that Barbara is still alive. But the Sweet Barbara that Chuck refers to was actually his caretaker, who was not named Barbara, but did die in a car accident. Supposedly. It is certainly a very strong possibility that Chuck Tingle is essentially just a character created by one person or by a group of people, but considering the background and the mental illness issues they would have given this character, I just hope that that is not the case because it feels kind of gross. Personally, I want to believe that Chuck Tingle is a neurodivergent individual who has managed to channel his highly specific interests and life philosophies into this body of work that both entertains and resonates with the masses, allowing Chuck to earn a decent income outside of his government subsidy checks, and he just so happens to sometimes want to be a dinosaur or an airplane. 
And when you get down to it, don't we all just sometimes want to be dinosaurs? Or, or is that just me? Slammed in the butt by the prehistoric Megalodon shark amid accusations of jumping over him. Open wide for the handsome saber-toothed dentist who is also a ghost. My ass is haunted by the gay unicorn colonel. Pounded by President Bigfoot. Seduced by Dr. Bigfoot, attorney at large. I'm gay for my living billionaire jet plane. Buttception, a butt within a butt within a butt. Kissed on the wiener by my own wiener. Slammed in the butt by the handsome sentient manifestation of election day. There's a Bitcoin in my butt and he is handsome. Rammed in the butt by the handsome sentient manifestation of traffic who is a bad boy. Seduced by the handsome physically manifested sound that some people here is Yanny and others here is Laurel. Remember that? The banana in my butt is a handsome lifeguard. A pound a day keeps the butt okay. Seven hardcore tales of physically manifested days of the week. Canada pounds my butt and covers my pancakes with real maple syrup in an erotic way, also it is delicious. My ass is haunted by the handsome ghost of my unsaved data after a computer crash. Pounded in the butt by this hangover. Oh my god, I'm never drinking again, except for maybe on Rick's birthday and then on that trip this weekend, but other than that, I'm probably never drinking again. Nice guy dinosaur doesn't pound me in the butt because I'm not interested and he's not actually nice, he's just annoying and creepy and doesn't respect my boundaries when I tell him we're not on a date. I think I've been out with that dinosaur. Moby butt. Yeah, of course. Eaten right by the mysterious S symbol everyone used to draw. We are loving bisexuals and they are living bicycles. And finally, pounded in the butt by my constantly changing thoughts on Chuck Tingle's real identity.